guys. <clears throat> that was cute. Hey guys, it's Autumn. Welcome to another video. Out of all my pets, you guys have been wanting to hear about chinchillas the most. So here I am to deliver, baby. All right, I wanted to go over some of the kind of background info first, and then I'll get into just the more general care, fun facts, you know, all that jazz. So first things first, chinchillas come from the rugged terrain of the Andes Mountains. They also come from the north central kind of terrains and mountains of Chile. So before fur trappers came to be, they could be found in Argentina, Chile, Peru, uh, Bolivia, but because of fur traders, they're pretty much just found in kind of the Chile area, and that is where they're from. They are an endangered species. Now this is because of their fur. They were big in the fur trade for a very long time, that's why they do so well in captivity. Now they are protected in the wild by law. Going back to the earlier history, in like the late 1700s, early 1800s, they were often killed for their fur. They, people wanted their pelts. This mostly took place in Europe. About 500,000 pelts were actually exported from Chile in 1899. Just Chile alone. That's it. Just from there. There was a guy named Matthias F. Chapman. He was actually the one that kind of brought them here to the US. He did a lot of the domestication. So he worked in Chile. He brought a shipment of them to the US. He really wanted to save them from extinction. He wanted to further the business, save them from extinction. He loved the creatures. He just loved what they were like. His first ship that he ever sailed docked in the US on February 22nd of 1923. That's kind of the history of it. Let's kind of get into some of the facts about them and the general information. Okay, so 99 well, more than 99% of the ones that we have in the US are the C. Laniger. I might be saying that wrong, but that is what ours tend to look like here. So their, their hearing and their ears and all that sort of thing was a really big reason to do research. They are considered rodents. They're one of the true rodents. So lots of research should be done. It's not just lab rats, okay? Just Not just lab rats, come here. So yes, this is Ludo. Um, as you can see, they have massive ears. Mine don't really like to be held. I got them from someone, so you, you might not see a whole lot of me holding them in this video. Just be warned. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But one of the biggest things you need to know, more than anything I would say, if you plan to own them, is that their teeth are always growing. They have to have stuff to chew on at all times. They will chew absolutely everything. If they have it, they will chew it. Therefore, give them designated things to chew on that they know are theirs to chew, like wood, like toys. Give them that stuff, they need it. The females actually get bigger than the males. So males get up to 21 ounces and females get up to 28 ounces. They typically get about 10 to 12 inches in length. A really important thing to note about chinchillas is that, is that they are herbivores. Don't give them protein. They need very little protein. Don't try to give them other types of food like guinea pig food, ferret food, none of that. No rabbit food, none of it. Their diet is very specific to them. Please, 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 I cannot stress enough, give them chinchilla food. It has a lot of the Timothy Hay components, it has a lot of the plants that they need, and just a lot of the nutrients that they absolutely need. They are herbivores, therefore that means very little protein. However, on the same token, I would stick to vegetables. Give them vegetables every so often as a treat. Don't give it to them all the time. Fruit, they recommend in very small quantities. I would say don't give your chinchilla fruit at all. They cannot handle or <clears throat> make anything of sugar. It's not good for them. They don't need a lot of sugar. Actually, it would be fatal to them. Don't give them a lot of sugar, please, for the love of God. Make sure, make sure, in, within their diet, you're always giving them Timothy hay. It's much like a rabbit or a guinea pig. They absolutely need it in their diet. Like I said, they are herbivores. It's very good for them. Make sure they always have Timothy hay. That isn't a treat. They always need it. As I'm sure you're aware, they're very fuzzy little guys. Their fur is very dense. I'll get more into that later. Please, please, if you are going to have them as a pet, keep them in a very cold environment. And when I say cold, I mean about like 70 degrees. Nothing lower than 50. God, do not, I would say nothing lower than 60, 65. Just keep them cool. When it gets hot, people keep their houses cooler. That's fantastic. That should be fine for them. They overheat very easily. It's when it's in the winter and we're cranking up our heat that it's a problem. So my chinchillas are in a bathroom that no longer works. Uh, the pipes burst. So they have their own room. It's a pretty large one. They can run around. They have free range, which is wonderful. You want 
your chinchillas to have lots of running space. Mine don't use a wheel. Some might, I don't know, but mine don't use it. They don't like the wheel. So they need lots of exercise. They're very active. Give them space to run around. You gotta let them out. I'd say multiple times a day, a couple hours a day, or just let them roam free range. If you have a dog or a cat, that's a different story. That's why I have them in a designated room. And like I said, it does stay chilly in here. So they stay cold. Another thing to note is that they need a tall cage because they like to climb. Some of the little ones that you see at like the pet stores, not good for them. I would say give them a tall cage. As tall as you can manage, give them a tall cage. One that I really recommend is this one. I will leave it right here. This is the cage I use for my rats. This is great for ferrets. It would be great for chinchillas get this cage. They need to use a dust bath at least two times a week. Don't use sand. Don't try to find random dust. They need a very specific dust. It's very similar to the volcanic ash that they bathe in in the wild. Do not bathe them with water. We're gonna go with one of the fun facts right now. If you bathe them with water, their fur is so dense that it won't dry and their fur could very potentially get moldy dust bath two times a week at least. They are crepuscular. This means they are most active at dawn and at dusk. So not nocturnal where they're more active at night, even though mine seem to be very nocturnal. I know some people say they are, like with most rodents, they are typically active at night, but in particular crepuscular. Now the cool thing about these guys is they can live up to 20 years, whereas rats, mice, gerbils, hamsters, they usually live a year and a half to two. Chinchillas can live up to 20. A good average age is anywhere from like 10 to 12 years to 20. Uh, anywhere in there, you know you're giving your chinchilla a good life. Some die as young as like seven to eight years old. They should live much longer than that. The biggest thing I can say is they are very sociable. So keep chinchillas together. I have a pair. They do great in pairs. I wouldn't keep them alone. And please, 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 please don't house them with other rodents like rabbits, guinea pigs. It's just best to keep them by themselves, to themselves. I can't even begin to say how much they chew and chew and chew. Just stay safe, keep you, all of your animals safe, keep everyone happy, give them their own space, no territorial issues. Just keep them in same gender pairs and uh, just let them do their thing. Um, I'm pretty certain, which is also very not common to most rodents from what I've gathered, is male to male pairs tend to do better than female and female pairs. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. My males, they don't get territorial. They're very happy together. They don't try to fight over their belongings. They're so fantastic. So now I wanna get into some fun facts about them. One thing to know is they have 20 teeth, specifically 20 teeth. In addition, like I said before, these teeth will always grow. As they get older, their teeth will yellow tremendously. Don't try to clean them. Don't worry about it. Don't think they're getting some sort of disease. No, that is incredibly natural. That is incredibly healthy. That is, that's what they do. That's fine. Their teeth are also rootless, which I thought was interesting. The newborn also already have teeth and they're born with their eyes open. How crazy is that? They're born with their eyes open, ready to go, no problems. Their teeth grow about two to two and a half inches per year. That is so tremendously insane, I can't even begin to comprehend it. Two inches to two and a half inches a year. I don't know how that compares to other rodents. I'm guessing with their size, that is tremendous. Whereas like a hamster, it might be like an inch or a half an inch. I don't really know. But what I do know is their teeth grow a lot and they're always chewing. Please keep stuff for them. Babies are called kits. Gestation lasts around three months. It's anywhere from like 105 to 118 days. Definitely longer than like a mouse or a rat or a hamster. For sure. They specifically have 23 vertebrae in their tails. They have very, very complicated little tails. They have a super fragile rib cage. I have been told the comparison of their ribs to how thin they are is that they're as thin as a toothpick. So they are very, very fragile little creatures. Please be very careful with them. Last but not least, they have 50 to 75 hairs per follicle. So that, in comparison to like us, we have, I think it's two to four per follicle, if that. Their fur is so dense and they are one of the softest creatures you will ever pet in your life. 
But again, don't get them wet, don't get moldy. They need a dust bath. The first two dents, they need dust, okay? There you go. If I were to rate them on like a rodent scale, they are probably one of the harder rodents to take care of. It really comes down to what is best for you and your family and the animals that you have. So please be very careful and do keep in mind, they are amazing animals, but they are an investment, both money-wise and with time. They do get really attached to their owners. Mine in particular aren't super attached to me yet because I know their owner previously absolutely loved them, absolutely treasured them, but because she had children, she wasn't able to socialize with them as much as they needed. Therefore, they're a little hesitant to get to know me. They do need socialization. That is very important. They need that interaction. They are not an animal that can be kept in a cage all day. With that being said, I am gonna show you some of the stuff that I suggest. This is by no means the absolute right way, but this is what I found works really great for mine. They're in good health. Mine are about three years old. They have lots of life to live. So I think with them, I don't wanna mess around. I don't wanna take risks. I wanna make sure they're getting the proper care. This is the food that I give them. Oxbow is pretty much one of the top of the line brands. I'm not saying it's the best brand. I'm not saying this is what you need to feed your chinchilla. I have just found it is really good for them. It has lots of greens in there. It has the grass hay that makes up most of this. Like I said, they are herbivores. I really, really like the Oxbow food. I give mine Oxbow treats <laughs> because these also have a lot of the um, Timothy grass in it. Mine absolutely love these. They absolutely love them. This is their favorite treat of all time. They're in cute little heart shapes. So it's really cute because mine will take it and they'll just nibble on their little heart. It's a precious. I will show some, some nice footage of that. I also have these drops by Vitacraft. Vitacraft is also a pretty good food brand. I do like Vitacraft. I feed my hamsters, mice, rats, Vitacraft. These are little yogurt drops specific to chinchillas. Don't get others. They have fruit, they have lots of sugar. These are specific for chinchillas. They're made with dandelion. I recommend these. Mine do like these, but their favorite are the Oxbow little heart-shaped ones with carrot and dill. They have another flavor. I think it has like apple or something. I don't really remember. I hope it's I don't know, it might be, I don't know what it is, but I go with carrot and dill, it sounds safer to me. As far as the Timothy hay goes, Oxbow makes Timothy hay, it's fantastic. However, I do like the KT Timothy hay. I also think this is a pretty good quality and I really like it. So, Timothy hay, gotta have it at all times. Aside from that, I would say important things to note, they always need fresh water. Mine are litter trained, they have wood shavings. Now I typically don't recommend wood shavings, but this is what they were taught to use, so I've kept them with it. They are not cedar. I don't recommend cedar wood shavings for anything. They have oils that are not healthy for small animals. I don't even know why they sell it in stores, to be perfectly honest with you. I do not re recommend cedar for anything. I don't even recommend wood shavings for about anything, especially hamsters, mice, and rats. Their feet are so small, it's easy for them to splinter, get that stuck in there. Ro uh, my chinchillas are bigger. It's a little bit of a safer thing for them, and it is only in their litter box. I don't know what it is, they just really like going in the litter box. So you can litter train your chinchillas, not too hard. Luckily mine were already trained, that's fantastic. Um, make sure you have a hide for them, they like to hide. And uh, what else, what else, what else? I use newspaper for their bedding, typically I use the Care Fresh for bedding. I use newspaper, again that was something that the owner before had done. I liked it, they seem used to it, it's easy to clean. So that's what I use. It's cheaper too. For their toys, I have little things like this. As you can see, they really like it. And I had a bundle of these sticks. They completely tore apart the binding. So now they just have loose little sticks everywhere. They absolutely love that. Lava blocks are really great for them. It's almost like a pumice stone. They love that. Mineral chews are a good choice. Mine don't seem to have a lot of interest in it. They like more wood textured things and like the pumice stones as opposed to the mineral block. It comes down to the personality of your chinchillas. This is a piece of wood. They like this. They like the little carrot. Pieces of wood. Um, anything like that is really good. They will like any of those things. I have all kinds of stuff that they have completely obliterated. This is 
what they have currently. They just, they go through toys very quickly, so keep that in mind. You will always have to keep wood and things at their disposal to chew on and feast on. Okay, so now, let's show some footage of my chinchillas. They're little angel babies. No, don't eat that. Hey! Most requested 
out of all of the animals I have currently. I will be making more care guides in the future, so stay tuned for those. Leave a comment down below telling me maybe what you would like to learn more about next. I'm thinking maybe my ferret or a reptile. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you want to see? Let me know. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next video, whatever that might be, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Bye!